into this first one, which I wanted to speak about, which is just a, a lack of shame. I think shame is one thing that I think we need to reintroduce back into the public lexicon. Shame is something that needs to be reintroduced back into the public conversation, right? Um, there's a lack of shame in society now. I think it serves people in one way, because I think if you want to be a social media star, if you want to get out there and record yourself on your phone, chatting shit, um, speaking about the weather, talking about something you ate or something that you saw, banal nonsense, you need, you need, you need a little bit of shamelessness, right? You can't have an ounce of shame in you because everyone with some shame would say, put your phone down, you know, and go home. But if you don't have shame, you can stand in the street and just talk to yourself. And in fashion, if you don't have shame, what you can do is that you can just copy whatever someone else has done that's been successful and add your little twist on it. And when I mean twist, I mean just add like a little neoprene sock to the top of it as Ambush did with these fucking Bottega Veneta puddle boot copies. It's a pretty heinous crime, to be honest. And again, don't get me wrong. You and Ambush isn't, you know, you from Ambush, I guess, isn't a quintessential designer, designer with a capital D. She basically comes more so from the streetwear side of things. Maybe you just say jewelry, you know, that's basically where she's kind of known for more so, but then kind of segue that into the whole streetwear side of things. But now she's starting to go more into the fashion world. And, you know, most of the stuff that she does in her mainline collection is completely forgetful. No one really gives a shit, but I guess people like her because she might be a nice person in real life. Don't know. Um, I had a brief conversation with her once working for a previous company, but again, nothing really was said. Had a bit of a personality of a cardboard box, really. But again, maybe it was an, it was an off day. But in terms of design, in terms of putting out product, I don't know, man. This is quite heinous. I think this is pretty heinous. And this is also coming off the back of the whole news we heard supposedly of, you know, Daniel Lee, you know, saying, you know, saying the words that he was supposedly didn't say and people are not sure if he did say who knows what actually was said but it's kind of the back of that and again i'm i'm not the the biggest fan of everything Patega veneta does but there's no denying that daniel lee created these absolutely iconic boots in the puddle boots i'm not sure if he actually did it because again because there's different designers that do different things within fashion houses maybe a footwear designer brought these but in terms of the tenure these puddle boots will go down and even the tire boots right they call tire boots um the big ones that everyone wears right these will go down in history the same like the Wyatt boots did for Hyde Hedy Semen and when, when he was during his time at SLP, right? Or Saint Laurent Paris. Same sort of stuff. They're like synonymous with what Bottega Veneta do. You can do your twist, you know, uh, Mike and Mary, God bless him, has his twist on fucking the Wyatt. So he's got these little crappy bandana chain link things on them that look fucking like a disaster. And you could have your twist, but, you know, there's this one thing having a twist and there's one thing just taking the entire thing and jacking it like she just completely jacked it the tread has changed a bit it might look a little bit more like a what's that fucking boot that all white people wear that love to wear like white people in america like to wear that looks like a fucking chelsea boot what's that boot called and white people here like to wear them too um fuck man i think you guys know what i'm talking about it looks she looks it looks more similar to that than it does like a puddle boot but still you can still see where the genesis of that idea come from she would have never she would have never done that design of a boot or that shape without seeing this first in the in the long run do you know what i mean and it's just this particular net boot again it's very popular it's a very unique shape you know you can see it from a mile off you know exactly who wore it those pants man look so good in those boots though isn't it Daniel Lee's run at Bottega Veneta, I mean, that'll go down in history. It was a very short run, but we got some iconic moments from that. But shape-wise, this is basically the same thing. She's just gone ahead and copied them. There's no no originality at all in thought or an idea. And, you know, it doesn't get called out because I guess you can't exactly copyright, I guess, or patent that shape, maybe. I think that's a thing. And maybe as well, if you're a designer, in one way, shape, or form, I know if that was me, if I saw my stuff on like Taobao and AliExpress and shit, I would be actually quite happy. And it was what are those like t-shirt shops that sell like printed tees. But like, you know, those kind of like one-stop shops where you get like a t-shirt with a BBC logo in it, but it's not a billion boys. It's not a billionaire boys club t-shirt. That for me would be like a good valid validation as for a designer that your designs have now kind of traversed and sort of like popped through into the mainstream. You thought it was just these little Instagram, you know, trendy kids that liked what you were doing then suddenly you see it on some fucking random site that you've never heard of before selling in the multiples of hundreds and thousands do you know what i mean that's definitely validation that you're doing the right thing but when it's somebody that's meant to be like a peer somebody that should be like on your same level quote unquote because for sure the ambush showroom is definitely in paris right they're, they're there where all the big guns are doing their thing trying to kind of you know 
um, what's that thing called? What do they call it when trying to position yourself in the right place, right? So you go into a showroom in Paris if you're ambush because you want to be positioned in the same place of all these other brands. You also have it, I'm sure if you go to a retail store, ambush is probably stocked on the same level on the same ground floor or whatever it may be on the same rail as some of these brands that you would know like maybe it's in the same section as a Bottega right in these kind of um uh multi-brand stores and shit but then if you go on the shoe rack and you see these next to these and you didn't pay attention you would legitimately think it was the same thing but it's not they're completely different and i don't know why there's no a lot of shame associated with this i know if it was me again you know my design days in university have long gone by but even nowadays when it comes to just doing minor things i do on my little crappy level like you try and if you're going to steal a design you try and tweak it to at least make it look like your own right or you just try and do something else yourself fresh so that you can kind of challenge yourself because what's the point right it's all well and good taking the genesis of an idea and trying to work on top of it but just taking it and basically adding a little neoprene sock liner to it isn't i think enough to justify this boost existence i think it doesn't need to exist and i think it's a crying shame that this is even sitting anywhere alongside the take of a net part of boots it really is and again this is after my guy you know said what he said in that meeting and now these boots will forever be known to me as nigger boots you know what i mean yeah <laughs> fucking nigger boots or nigger puddle boots or puddle nigger boots or something along those kind of lines right that's what they're kind of always going to be referred to me as but even with that being said even with these nigger puddle boots existing this is still not reason enough for somebody to go out there and completely rip somebody else off for, for their designs I wonder if all these guys burned all their their nigger boots. I mean, he's wearing a pair of nigger boots. Yeah, with his great outfit. Everyone's got their nigger boots on. Um, but yeah, man, nigger puddle boots. Kershaw Protect Vanettas have been ripped off by Yoon from Ambush. She should have more shame or whoever designed them should have more shame. Um, get some fresh ideas. Come with some new things. You know, at least as, as I think people need to give people like Matthew Williams a lot of credit for. Even though those kind of bulbousy all one shape sort of shoes are really ugly i think they're too shiny for me maybe they should be a little bit more matte maybe i don't know if that's a thing um but at least he tries to create new shapes even with the nike collaboration that he does he he tries to go for the unconventional he's not always going for the safe easy thing you know the safest thing he's done so far with nike has been the air force one high but even though he's kind of added these little twists to them and made them his own right and made them kind of distinctly what he kind of does right under the elite sort of banner but the stuff he's doing with Givenchy in terms of the footwear is super fresh super interesting and then you numbers come through and it's just like Gah. it's just like copy Bottega Veneta because it's the brand at the moment it's like what if this shoe didn't kick what if because again this shoe's probably been in development for a long time because I'd imagine developing shoes or manufacturing and producing shoes is probably a long you need a long lead up time so these have been in the works probably since the first times these dropped but how about if these died after I don't know are they going to die after a couple of seasons maybe a couple of seasons more they kind of you know run a course and then what what happens to all those kind of copies you made do they suddenly go into the scrap heap and they want to talk about sustainability, but then you're going out and copying people's shoes and then a couple of seasons later, they're dead. I don't know, man. These people are weird, 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 weird people.